Hi, my name is Norm Miller, and I'm going to review the economics of lease analysis. I'm a professor at the University of San Diego. I have a website, www.normmiller.net, and this is part of a larger lecture on lease analysis with more detail on the clauses and types of leases. But I want to focus here on the financial analysis of leases. So I'm going to go through this rather quickly, but if you visually look at three leases over time, A, B, and C, and you see that the amount of rent paid is different for each, one starting a little bit later where it's free, one starting even later than that, and then stepping up, um, the question is which of these leases are best for the land landlord or best for the tenant? And the answer is, I really don't know. It depends on the discount rate, uh, that is the opportunity cost of capital for the tenant and the landlord, and how important cash is to them right now, and whether they like a level monthly budgeting, and whether that matters. So we need to do something to compare all these leases on a present value basis. And that's what we're going to talk about right here. There's different types of output that we could provide on a financial analysis basis. The net present value of the lease for the entire period, which is different for the landlord and the tenant because they need not have the same discount rates. We could simply look at the average lease cost. That Some brokers call this incorrectly the effect of rent, where they simply take the total amount of rent paid over a lease term and divide it by the number of months. Um, that would be the average lease cost, but it's certainly not effective rent. We could look at the total dollar outflow or inflow of the rent. We could look at the net present value per square foot. Or we could look at the effective level rent payment or receipt per square foot, which is really our preferred method. Effective rent for a given space or per square foot. And the effective rent I'm going to define here is really a present value calculation. That is, you take the present value of all the lease payments, inflows and outflows, and you convert them to a equal level payment. This is also called the annuitized rent per square foot, uh, where we can compare different types of leases um, on a level basis. The formula for doing this conversion is going to be something like this. The lease present value, LPV, is equal to the cash flow times zero plus the cash flow time at time one, two, three, all the way to time t. Now here I'm assuming that the cash flow is received at the beginning of the period. That's why the cash flow for period one is actually not discounted at all, it's just summed. But by dividing cash flow of period 2 by 1 plus the discount rate K, I'm effectively bringing it back to present value using the present value of a single sum factor. And I do the same thing for each period. So the cash flow in period 3, paid in the beginning of the period, I discount using a discount rate for, for two periods. Now note that the K here is a uh, monthly discount rate if the payment is monthly. So if my discount rate were, say, 12%, that would be a monthly discount rate of approximately 1%, and I'd be using 0.01 here. Um, if it was an annual payment, I'd be using more of the annual discount rate. So I first take the least present value of all the cash flows, and then I convert it to a level annuity using this formula at the bottom. The discount rate times the least present value over 1 plus the discount rate times everything in paren there, 1 over 1 minus 1 over 1 plus k to the t. Now, right there, this is a present value of a single sum factor, but what we're doing is taking a present value of the whole annuity here, um, and then we're taking the inverse of it to convert it to a monthly payment. 
So this is similar to what we do when we're solving for any kind of monthly payment. It could be monthly, it could be annual. But let me give you an example to make this more visual. Let's say that we have a rent pattern as follows. TI, tenant improvements of $25, so from the landlord's point of view they're putting out $25. No rent the next period, then rent of $40, then $50, then $60. And this could be annual. Um, and let's just keep it simple, annual payments, and discount it at 10% and say, what is this the equivalent of? And it turns out that over this entire five years or five periods, it is equal to a present value discounted effective annual rent of $20.77 per square foot per year. I couldn't guess that from that pattern, but that's the result I get when I take the present value of minus 25 plus 0 plus 40 plus 50 plus 60, all discounted from the period in which they're received at the 10% discount rate. So one more time, an annuitized or an effective rent calculation procedure starts with doing a lease present value and then converting the lease present value to an annuity with this effective rent calculation that we see there. K is the same as the discount rate, T again is the term of the lease and that's usually in months although it could be years if the payments are made in years. Let me give you an example. Lease A, it has a term of five years the rent is $20 a square foot net, but there's no rent the first year at all. It's an annual payment, just once per year to keep the math simple. So the lease present value of lease A is equal to 0 plus 20 divided by 1 plus 0 0.10 to the first power, which is neutral, plus $20 discounted for two periods, three periods, four periods, etc we get a $63.40 effective, I'm sorry, lease present value. Now we convert that using the effective annuity formula to a level payment of $15.20 per year. So that's one example. Now this one was $20 a year with free rent for the first year. Let's do one that is six years, free rent the first year, and the second year, but a payment of $25 a year after that. Same discount rate. In this case, we get a present value of $72.04, which is larger than we got in the previous lease because, of course, that was only five years. And note that the effective rent on this offer, if you will, if this is an offer from a landlord to a tenant, is $15.04. And how does that compare to what we had before? We had $15.20 before, so this lease is actually cheaper, even though it's $25 a year for four years, because we have two years of free rent up front. So this method would let me compare leases that might not be the same size or term, or different months of free rent. And if I ask the question, which one is better, it, it really depends on your discount rate and your circumstances. But generally, all things equal, the tenant's going to take lease B here, the one with the lower effective rent, 1504, as opposed to the one with the lower lease present value. So that's the end of my initial overview using PowerPoints. I want to address two other points here. What happens if we have inflation. Is there any other way of dealing with a lease other than using the nominal discount rate that includes inflation? And the answer is if your inflation is built into your discount rate you could alternatively use real discount rates instead and the real discount rate would be much lower. So if we expect it, um, if we were using a 3% uh, inflation expectation um, and we had a 7% real discount rate 
and a 3% inflation expected discount rate, our nominal discount rate should be 1031. Uh, let me say that another way. 10.21%. Um, you see the number right here. That's 1 plus the 7% discount rate compounded times the inflation rate. Though the point of nominal discount rates is that they include the compounding effect of inflation within them. So if you really want a 7% real discount rate and you really expect 3% inflation, you have an annual rate there of just over 10.2%. Now I can prove that this is the same and that if we used a 7% discount rate or a 1021 discount rate, I'm sorry, I should say 0.1021 discount rate, we actually end up with the same result. And the point is that if I'm not sure what inflation is, but I know my real discount rate, I could simply use real discounting as a way to come up with the present value of a lease. And in fact, I get the same thing as if I had a perfect inflation forecast. Okay, hopefully that didn't confuse you too much, but let me look at one more spreadsheet. And this is a spreadsheet I have on my website. And this one is a little bit uh, more traditional in that it uses nominal numbers. We have a 10,000 square foot lease as an input, 60 months, commencement date, January 1st, 2015. Um, of course, I can make that anything we wanted to, 2016. Contract base rent of $40, no free rent, nothing above TI budget, that is uh, the landlord's tossing in nothing above whatever they said they would in uh, the new construction budget. Annual escalations expected on the rent of 5%, and the landlord's using a 7.5% discount rate. Note that right here, this is the landlord perspective, not the tenant perspective. So if we lay out the periods and the dates and the rents, and there's no discounts here, and there's no above TI, we simply get the cash flows. You have the net present value of that cash flow brought back to present value. So you see in time zero, there's no change in the net present value versus the rent itself, but then the further away it is, the less that rent is worth. And if you take the sum of all of these rents, at net present value, you get 1.836 million, 446, 14 cents right there. I put in the annuity factor and the annualized uh, annuity factor or um, per square foot, uh, but what I'm really shooting for is this number right here, the effective rent per square foot per year, forty-three dollars and forty. I'm sorry, ninety-six cents versus the uh, contract rent that starts at forty, and that's of course because of this escalation even though we have a 7.5% discount rate, and monthly that's effectively $3.66. The monthly effective rent here, because it's 10,000 square feet, is 36633 So if I'm a landlord, that is my calculation of what I'm receiving. Let's look at this from the tenant's perspective, and I'm going to go ahead and change that to 2016, 10,000 square feet, 60 months, $40, no free rent. Notice now I have a discount rate of 10%. It's often true that the tenants are going to have a higher discount rates because they typically have faster growth opportunities than landlords um, have and, and also because the businesses are often riskier than owning real estate. 
The TI paid by the tenant is $25. Now, we didn't have that in the landlord's numbers because they paid nothing extra. And they also pay operating expenses for things like property taxes and insurance and cleaning and janitorial and all of those type of things of $12 per square foot. And they expect these to grow at 4% per year. So we have a calculation of all of these numbers with an effective rent of 4386 but if you look at the actual cost to occupy it's sixty three dollars and forty eight cents per year per square foot with all of those other costs the level annuity cost is right there fifty three eight ninety nine the effective rent thirty six thousand five fifty if I was looking at different leases and I'm a tenant and one building's more efficient than another, maybe it's lead gold, lower operating expenses because of lower energy costs, then, then this number is really the key to me. Which one is the lowest? So what we have here is a slightly bigger spreadsheet because we have the net present value of occupying. and that is separate from just the rental cost itself. So this particular lease is the same thing, 60 months, and we have a lease analysis, present value, but also an analysis that includes the total cost to occupy because we've added in this column L for uh, operating expenses and you see that the tenant also considers that they're shelling out some TI up front. So this is another spreadsheet looking at it from the tenant's point of view and with this type of an analysis we could compare any kind of lease uh, with any kind of flow with any kind of TI or operating expenses and that's really what's essential to be able to make sound decisions for which lease is best from the landlord or tenant point of view. So thank you. I hope this was helpful to you. And uh, again, if you want to look at the website, it's www.normmiller.net.